My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Monster Train Herzl's Workshop. We're going to continue with the same uh, clan combination. Feeling a little bit more comforted by the amount of comments on the past couple episodes that are like, yeah, this clan combination is kind of universally agreed to be rough. So, not feeling so bad about it, certainly. Friendly units gain three rage whenever they lose a stack of burnout. There's also the... Whenever you would descend or descend an enemy unit, also apply days two. That would days three anything we hit with a drip fall. And we would probably draft a drip fall should we see one. However, with two wick lashes in the deck, Fade's first blade looks real good. I think that allows us to set up a second floor that is melting remnant. Damage spells cost negative one on this floor. We're not going to go for an incant stacking build. I don't think. Ooh, we have a guardian in the deck already. And we have crit builders, which are offering targets. Okay, we may actually end up going with an incant stacking build. Interesting. I mean, we could take the conduit here. What would we have to do? So remnant banner next to the Merchant of Steel. Okay, so that would ideally be where we get a unit that we start throwing these wick lashes on. I think for the sake of the bosses, we still need to take the Chillwind here. I don't think our spells are going to be good enough to do that. Definitely want to try the unit draft. Don't really care what happens as long as I get the unit draft. Well, as long as I don't die as well. Those are my two things. Just don't die and unit draft, please. So ultimately, what is our plan? It's Guardian, Stone, Shiny, Steward, and Tethys, Titan Bane on the same floor. That means we can easily set up on the top. Nice, nice. I feel like I need to use every incant I get access to here on the top floor. We're going to be taking... A decent amount of damage here, certainly. Come on, second crypt builder, nice. Unfortunately, then we lose the Guardian Stone in the next. We take only nine damage so far. Let's reform. Okay, that's fine. You can go there, and then we can put this in front of you as long as we hit you with a Wicklash. Hopefully, we get another Wicklash next turn. We did not. Ouch. <sighs> I still don't care what happens as long as I get that draft here. Even after all of that, I like the, the flash freeze for a backline target. Wicked Blaze, Wicklash. Wicked Blaze makes a lot of sense in this deck as well. Okay, so Guardian named Tethys Titan Bane and Guardian Stone on the same floor. That's already comfortably how we handle our bosses. And then if we go for a Melting Remnant over on this side, we can set up a second floor already. Multi-Strike and Burnout. Uh, Okay, it could have been better here, but we will take the, the Lady of the House. It has a high amount of Burnout on my base. Uh, we're also going to be wicklashing it a lot, so I'm just going to give it multi-strike. I'm also going to give it the plus one to the burnout. It's good enough for me. Is it possible we go to that hellbent and dupe it? Certainly. It's, it's certainly possible. In fact, I would even argue at this point it's likely. Start about all enemy units appear on each floor. The problem with this one this time is this will actually kill us, so I can't get the 75 gold there. Thankfully, we're not going to a shop in the next ring. Well, probably not going to a shop in the next ring. Okay. There are extra money there at the absolute least. Might as well prevent myself losing a draw next turn. 
Yeah, that's already good enough on that floor by itself. Take a Helical Crystallis. Draft, Wicklash. Both really good. With the amount of reforms we still have in the deck, I think that draft is like very valuable. We've also got the Wicked Blaze, which is a easy draft combo card there for us. Oh God, maybe I want the health and I want some upgrades. Literally just like health upgrade on the the uh, the guard of the unnamed, possibly the Guardian Stone with the plus five plus ten if it's there. Uh, draft, obviously, burnout, damage, pretty much anything goes on that draft happily. The thing about the two Lady of the House thing is they will have that burnout, but I will have to find ways to, like, refresh their burnout. Otherwise, I end up losing, right? No, I like the two Lady of the House strat too much. Oh, no, no, no. Paraffin Enforcer is real good as well. It could be the Lady of the House. Maybe it's just Paraffin Enforcer, two Ladies of the House on the same floor. I go Capacity? Uh, and then Guardian Name Garden Stone. Tethys Tynebane, that is a five cap. Paraffin Enforcer just gives us so many more options here. It's... Really hard to turn that down. I'll just spell. I'm thinking of just getting the Crypt Builder here. Because they're going to be really hard to hard cast right now, but maybe they'll be easier to cast later. Okay, and then in terms of our dupe, it still is Lady of the House. I'm interested here. Uh, getting more burnout on them is going to be really hard. I I don't understand entirely how we're going to do it, but we'll find out, I guess. This is a double explosive as well. Don't want to really set up on the bottom floor. Probably not, right? take 20 damage here in order to save a lot more damage on the Lady of the House in the future. I mean, Lady of the House is going to be reformed later on anyway, right? So, fine. This Incant Floor is, uh, it's, it's not, it's not working. <laughs> I, I don't have any spells to cast on that floor happily. Okay, can do that there, and then this there for a little bit more armor. Now we can Primitive Mold to get the Lady of the House back. The other one in the Primitive Mold at the moment is not good. Good big burnout timer on there. Um, sure. Finally got the Guardian Stone on the top line. So it was at the very bottom of the first deck. Yeah, that makes the incant certainly a lot rougher. Take three damage. And we win on this floor. Great. Suspected that was going to be the case. <sighs> <clears throat> Wickless. Remove all burnout and debuff effects from your unit. 
Removing all debuff effects from the unit is going to be pretty effective in the Seraph the Temperant fight. However, removing burnout from the unit means that suddenly I'm not scaling anymore with Fade's First Blade and I'm not scaling anymore with the Paraffin Enforcer. However, it's possible that I just keep this, permafrost it, and then play it right before the boss comes into the, the battle, right? Because then I'm not going to be scaling much anymore past that point anyway. Or maybe I've scaled far enough and I just need to make sure that I don't die to not having enough burnout on the units. The thing is they scale really high when they do scale, which makes it really hard to justify taking this because they should just kill. I'm not going to take this. We will, however, continue over the course of the run to evaluate whether or not it would have been a good idea. Take the line of the Seraph there. Gonna want... Do I have in here? If I get Conduit, maybe I go draw. I might hybridize into Conduit and then go draw. Uh, Stygian, Artifacts. As much as I like Artifacts here, Merchant of Magic is pretty good. Wicked Blaze, Wick Lashes. Yeah, they all want... They all want to be a little bit more common. Holdover is as common as you can get. Well... So Holdover Wicked Blaze is interesting, right? But is it what we actually do? Are we going to be reforming them that often? Or do we want to hold over a Wicklash so that we can make sure that a unit has Burnout? I think it's the Wicklash and make it zero cost. This whole second floor strat, like with the Tethys, is uh, very quickly fading. I would not be surprised if at some point I end up removing the Guardian Unnamed and the Guardian Stone and just forget that I even have a Tethys. Conduit, Conduit, Conduit. No Conduit. How's my sweep right now? We've got two multi-strike units on the same floor as well as a unit behind them. It's pretty good. Nomos enemy units gain multi-strike. That is going to be a lot of damage they deal to the ladies of the house, but I will also be able to reform them. However, when I reform them, they won't come back with rage. So hopefully I'm only reforming the frontliner commonly. There are a lot of artifacts here that make it significantly more powerful. In particular, the incense, the sensor. I can't remember its name right now, but it is whenever you give a unit burnout, give it two more burnout. That seems like it would be extremely useful for us. Love that first turn right there. Wow. Oh, we've got two primitive molds and a wicker blade still in there. We could get the lady of the house back in time. Ah, oh, I should have cast that on the top floor. That's my bad. <clears throat> I really like this floor. This one's working out pretty well. I mean, there's nothing really else to do. They're going to take care of it pretty... No! Not pretty handily. <clears throat> Could have sworn they would. Now they will. Yeah, it was literally just we needed one of the backliners down. I'm very glad that I included that spell because I specifically took that spell to take care of backliners and then it did it in the situation. It was nice to see. Merchant cost reduced by 25%. Uh, Love to see it. Deep offering. There will be a second crypt builder in this deck at some point. And it's a lot of extra draw that helps cycle us through the deck. If nothing else, we'll probably want to double cost reduce that. Um, Engulfed in smoke would make that a very, very healthy floor, actually. Because they don't really have scaling defense there. Ugh. All right, I'll take back the Crypt Builder. I don't care if it goes to its next level of Heaven's Aid. I only get Heaven Aid these days. I don't know what it is. I cannot give it a spell and get anything except for Heaven's Aid. 
I really wish I could because Heaven's Aid is not what I want. Consume removal. Make that two cost. Definitely don't want to. Let's uh, make Deep Offering a draw five at the end of your turn. Sure, resin block four, buffing units that happen to die. Buff the Helical Crystallis damage and then move on. Actually, maybe we should cut two cards from the deck right now, right? No, next spring has Merchant Trinkets. Okay, we'll waddle on with the amount of money we have right now then. Nomboss, and with spikes four. Uh, that is fine. Okay. Sorted. Definitely Flash Freeze there, try and take significantly less damage on the Lady of the House in the back line. Mm. Alright, we lose Tethys. That's fine. I ought not really need Tethys. Although I will Primed him all to get back. Guess I'll put you on this floor to get a big attack out. Tethys is now just a frostbite spell for us. Honestly, feels a little better that way. Let's get that out of the deck. Don't want to have to draw back into it. Beautiful. It's engulfed in smoke. We get one turn of invincibility here. Engulfed in smoke. Another turn of invincibility. And then, to, yeah. Love it. Oh, God. This? This is good. I am enjoying this. Gain five gold whenever a friendly dies. Like, days one to all enemy units and discard your hand. Sure. I think it's too late for the subsuming blade. Is it? Yeah. <clears throat> Certainly is for us, at least. Have to go over to the Merchant of Trinkets here. No. Hard reroll. Wow. Um. Wow, actually, if I remove the Shiny Stewards and the Guardian Stone... And the God of the Unnamed. That's not actually that far from my ability to do. The mid floor would immediately become Lady of the House, Lady of the House, and Paraffin Enforcer. The problem then becomes if the middle floor is the one that has its size decreased, I can't replay a Lady of the House on that floor after they die. But having them out instantaneously would really help them scale a lot. I really like that idea, actually. So it'd be Sketches of Salvation on this floor and then purge one card and then we have to purge two cards. Wait. One, one, two, three, four, five, five. Purge one card. So we have to purge four more. No, four, three, three more cards. This area is not heavy on purges. Let's have a look at the concealed cabins first. Okay, this is actually really interesting. We don't have direct heals for anyone, so we just get here plus 10 for every unit. It's remarkable. Does that affect our decision? It might do. Hmm. Because my second floor isn't doing anything anymore. This this is the only floor that matters. These These units. What happens when Paraffin Enforcer gets put out front? 
We intend on cutting the deck deeply down and just using Engulfed in Smoke and Frenzied Swarm to save them. <sighs> Screw it, I'm all in. I think this is a good idea. I think it'll take us a moment to get it together, but I think if we can get it together, this is an excellent idea. Totally fine floor right there. <clears throat> hmm. It's going to be really difficult to keep the draft alive. No, wait, I can keep both of them alive with the Wicklash. Just Wicklash one of them each turn. Yeah, we're totally good. And I've even got the armor totem on that floor. Maybe I leave the armor totem in the, in the deck and just intend on no one dying? That seems so risky to me, but maybe it's not risky at all. Maybe it's extremely safe. I'm just being a little bit of a wimp. I honestly don't think I need the second lady of the house right now. Oh, I shouldn't have used that. Okay, so because I did the the, uh, the spell there, the Paraffin Enforcer was robbed of the ability to actually even attack. Fine. I still need to trigger the holdover because that is why I can play this many burnouts right now. All right. Love getting all the wick lashes now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I kill that back liner there just to save nine damage next turn on my front liner. So it's gonna start mattering a lot. So we're looking for nice engulfed in smoke was gonna be one of them certainly. So I'll just frenzied swarm. We managed to heal four in that fight with the Heaven's Aid. It's fine, I guess. Mm, endless on a friendly unit. Basically, endless on a friendly unit just says if you mess up, don't. If you did mess up, don't though. I don't think we have the ability to cut the rest of the primitive molds from the deck, so I, I, I don't think that's actually useful for us. Definitely not capacity. As much as I want it to be draw right now, it might be energy. We've had a lot of difficulty actually playing any of our anythings. And it's not like we have a bunch of Merchants of Magic coming up in the future that we get to access all of. <sighs> Thank you. Multi-Strike is so big on the Paraffin Enforcer here. Let's turn to Draft. It's not plus 10, it's Purge. 95, we're just out of the ability to Purge one more. Plus three spell power or extra frostbite. I get two extra frostbite with my 20. It That doesn't really make sense. You know what? I'm taking the money here. I'm going back for another purge. I kind of like the guardian stone on that floor as well. So I might want to purge the draft, which means no burnout up for the draft. I 
<laughs> Spell skills negative one on this more. No longer doing that, obviously. We just removed the unit that stands in front of the Tethys. It's not happening. Uh, yeah, we'll just make Chillwind a, a, a better spell. <laughs> can deal with this we'll take 30 damage but we can deal with this great floor As we expected, here's our 30. Hmm. Yeah, I have to get it. Extra 100 matters. Thank heck we got engulfed in smoke here, but it's not going to save the Lady of the Wax. Yeah, we're going to lose the draft as well. Rough. Let's reform these two, pop them both on the bottom. go. Frontline a loss for the other floor. However, we do get Wicked Blaze. Great, so we can get it back. Hmm. Yeah, the offering actually helps here because it gets us the Wicklash. Interestingly, this one also has burnout. Uh, this 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 is now the holdout one. So, mm, no, but I want to put the draft back on that floor. So I don't want to start putting burnout on the the paraffin enforcer as well. The paraffin enforcer, if it has burnout, would buff itself while it attacks, which can get pretty sick. Sure, let's wicked maze. Getting back the draft because it's the only one that fits this floor right now. Lay it out. We're going to need some spell upgrades on the engulfed in smoke. That's the big next thing we're looking for. So double lady of the house. I'm honestly just going to pop them both here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I thought they would be tanky enough to actually get me enough frostburn here to, to win. It turned out to be the case. Frostburn, frostbite rather. Grab my 400 and move onwards. Uh, Pass. I would have considered the mortal entrapment if I wasn't having energy problems. Has to be the merchant magic. But if nothing else, we just need to make engulfed in smoke cost nothing and then dupe it. Let's quickly look at the merchant trinkets first though. Spells get an extra upgrade slot. Interesting. X cost cards get plus three to their value when played, or a random card in hand costs zero when a unit is played. I think we have to take Flicker's Liquor as well. Permafrost. Mm. 
I think what I might do here is put permafrost on the, the engulfed in smoke and then just dupe it. So that effectively, whenever I need defense suddenly, I can just suddenly have defense. Now, in terms of the purges, the draft honestly feels like one of the things that we want to get out of here. Yeah, the ladies of the house are going to scale faster than the draft. The, the draft is just a bad lady of the house for us right now. That's probably the easiest way to explain it. Um, the thing is, if I also really want to, I remove Guardian Stone here so that I can replay ladies of the house on the same floor. And I actually think that's the right idea. We'll also deep the engulfed in smoke. And go into the fight. Okay. Not paraffin first. Not paraffin first. And not paraffin first. Finally got lucky this one time. I know I get lucky relatively often, I know. <laughs> Did not mean it seriously. Okay. Flash the one that's most likely to live. Start setting some uh, frostbite on the enemy in the back line as well. Love that too. Hmm. Get a whole new hand. Certainly that goes on the top floor, at the absolute least. Some engulfed in smoke again. Now hopefully we just manage to cycle through the deck fast enough that the engulfed in smoke is more than enough. This sucks. I'll tell you what sucks about this. It's that the Paraffin Enforcer no longer has enough damage to actually even attack. It no longer buffs its fellow units. It needs to be... Do we need it scaling? I think we need it scaling. But I don't want to give it all the... Uh, I've only got one other Wicklash in the deck is the big thing as well. We could replay it, certainly. Okay, fine. Getting my extra damage out there. Tell you what, not a huge fan of that top floor right now. Not at all. We might already be dead. Wow. What was it about this floor that ended up killing us so hard? Was it two light wings got added in and that's the big bad? I'm really disappointed about that. I I I thought we were certainly going to scale fast enough there. I thought in fact we had already scaled fast enough there to be able to take those units down. That's Oh. That's really unfortunate. Yes, the Tethys would have actually worked had I had a uh, tank in front of it. Yep. Yeah, that's certainly true. Uh, it, it would have, however, the possibility does exist if I left the the big fish in the tank, uh, in the deck, that it would be summoned to the middle floor. And especially if it was summoned to the middle floor in the back line, then I lose. I don't scale with the ladies of the house and the paraffin enforcer and I just lose. Um... So I, I still I still stand by removing the Guard of the Unnamed. It's just, if I had it, and it didn't get summoned to the middle, and I put it in front of the Tethys, then I might have been a little bit more protected by it. But that is effectively saying, like, if I was fine, I would be fine, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly quite surprised. I, I was quite surprised with how effectively it was actually working, but then I was even more surprised by the sudden death there. Carrying more HP into the final fight would have been another way to 
certainly have a, a, a better time there. What do we lose in that fight? Um, that's not going to tell us the amount of health that we lost in that fight. We took a decent amount of damage in the previous fight as well. Actually, maybe... Oh, wow. Is it the 30 damage that we took against the Winged Horde on turn one that we specifically took so that we could get the 400 gold? Is that what ended up killing us? I wouldn't be entirely surprised if that's what ended up killing us. I'm going to take the Generate Challenge here, because especially with a Paraffin Enforcer, two ladies of the house with the early multi-strike the uh, and Fade's first blade, as well as a couple of the other relics really contributing to it as well. Uh, but this could be a very, very exciting and fun run. I am certain of that much. So let's load up this custom challenge, which is going to go at the top of the link in the description down below. Top of the description. Let's load up this challenge, which will have the keywords serve printed Joshua at the top of the description down below. There we go. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.